Kimberly Cheadle, the U.S. Secret Service director who almost got Trump assassinated, decided to resign today. Yeah, I don't know if this was all pure merit. I doubt it. Um, I don't know if this was her decision or did she go home and sit back, get on YouTube and start watching replays of what she just got savagely demolished through. And then she goes, you know what? I can't take this heat. Uh, this DEI hire and stuff ain't for me. And not only that. Where the heck is Joe Biden? All right, we've got some breaking news out of the U.S. to share with you. Reports say the director of the Secret Service has resigned. This comes one day after she was in the hot seat, facing really tough questions about the stunning security failures that led to the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Crooks was neutralized after he shot President Trump in the face, Ms. Cheadle. Is he only a threat once he fires the weapon? As soon as the counter sniper identified that individual, they were able to neutralize them. Kimberly Cheadle acknowledged the agency's failures, but provided few details when asked about the security. Few? Try none. This woman didn't answer nothing. Breakdown. With me now is Mark Lowry. He's a former U.S. Secret Service agent spending 24 years with the Secret Service before retiring as a senior executive service appointed special agent in charge of the Dallas, Texas district. Good mm. morning. Good to see you again. So we booked you to come on and talk about what happened yesterday at that hearing. But now this report coming in that she has resigned, despite the fact that Cheadle said she wasn't going to Let's start with your reaction to this breaking news. I heard it uh, just about the same time you did, just a few minutes ago. And I think uh, I know this had to be a very difficult decision for the director to make uh, personally, but I think it was the right decision to make. I think we need a uh, we need a clean break here and get uh, get the the concerns uh, with her in, in yesterday's hearing behind us in the United States and the government, and then we can we can focus on the mission at hand. What were you thinking as you watched yesterday and Cheadle refused or didn't or couldn't answer question after question from lawmakers? Well, like uh, so many Americans, I was frustrated. Um, I could tell the Extremely. congressmen uh, and congresswomen were frustrated and in many cases angry. Uh, I was frustrated and angry, and I think many of the citizens were frustrated and angry. Uh, I know there's um, answers that she most likely already had that she could not or would not share. I would have liked them to go back into a classified briefing and get these answers out. The American people um, deserve these answers. The American people have lost confidence in their government in the last few years. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. The last few years, man, I'll say the decline has been here even before a hobby came in the dog. But you're right, though. I will say in the last couple of years, there has been this great awakening, you know, so to speak. These types of situations are doing nothing to improve our confidence in our United States government. At we all. have to have a competent, transparent and timely investigation so that we as the people can understand what happened. We need to fix whatever broke down and go forward. Um, it was frustrating. I think she had answers that she could have shared but chose not to. Maybe if it would have been in a classified briefing, that would be different. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you then a little bit more about that because as I think many people were watching at first, you were kind of getting the sense that, you know, there was some sort of oath of secrecy, whatever she couldn't share, as you said. But then it devolved into a situation where you started to wonder if she even knew really basic answers to what went wrong. So I'm going to be honest. At no point when I watched it that I feel like she didn't know the answers to the questions. Uh, that's just me personally. Uh, I felt like she was obviously trying to evade it, obviously trying her best not to uh, uh, incriminate herself in some kind of way. Because, you know, on that stage, everything that she says, we, the American people, we were listening to every single word that she said. I mean, we were waiting. 
what was it? Do you think that she shouldn't have gone in front of the cameras? Should it have been done behind closed doors um, instead of publicly? How could this have gone down in a better way where lawmakers, again, would have been more satisfied with what went down on that Saturday, uh, July 13th? I'm not questioning what Congress chose to do as far as bring it out in a public hearing, because I know that they know their constituents want transparency. They need to hear um, there were answers, I believe, that timelines that she would have had access to that um, I don't think would have jeopardized the investigation or jeopardized the operations of the Secret Service. Mm -hmm. It's critical for people to understand this isn't a Sunday afternoon game that went wrong in a Monday morning game film and get ready for next Sunday. The Secret Service is right now 365, 24 7 performing their, their very important mission for not just America, but for the world. Mm -hmm. So we need to find out quickly where the breakdown was. This should have never happened. We need to find out quickly what happened. It needs to be corrected, and we got to move forward in a positive manner. Uh, there were some <clears throat> hesitancy in answering some questions based upon the ongoing FBI investigation. One of the questions I would ask is how often is the FBI briefing Director Cheadle or the Secret Service? That should be ongoing 10 days later. It should mm. be ongoing at least once a day, if not more. Where is Joe Biden? We're going to get into that in, the, in a second, y'all. We got we to make sure we cover our bases with this breaking news that we just had. Uh, somebody says, we need to continue, but they are refusing to testify now. Who is they? FBI, the Secret Service, and Homeland Security all refused to testify today. Secret Service security failures under a microscope on Capitol Hill again today. The House, House Homeland Security Committee is holding the second congressional hearing looking into the attempted assassination of former President Trump. But for today's hearing, heads of the Secret Service, FBI and Homeland Security have all declined to testify. We are listening to it. We will bring you the news from it. Mm -hmm. I'll say y'all about a week and a half late from this. We, it's crazy how we we call this stuff out like this is gonna happen. This needs to happen, and then it's being fought against. Oh no, it's not gonna happen. It's not. We're not gonna do that. And then boom, <laughs> it happens. You know what I'm saying? Like a week and a half late. Somebody said arrested for perjury. Somebody else said this whole Trump assassination attempt reminds me of the movie 2007 shooter with Mark Wahlberg. It's the exact same storyline. Probably got to go check that out. I haven't seen it. They will likely replace her with someone worse. Somebody else said she needs to be. I would like Dan Mangino to be head of Secret Service Security Detail. You know, just, just me. But he's you know, very successful doing what he does. I don't see him trying to add that much stress back into his life. She needs to be held accountable for the life of Corey and the two others that were critically injured, plus the attempt of Trump's life. Definitely, for sure, man. But that's all that we got on her right now. Um, moving forward, where is Joe Biden? Charlie Kirk posted... Uh, I look like a tweet or a truth social. He posted a truth and uh we have tucker carlson actually reading it out wow we get two for one special right so yeah let's go ahead and get tucker carlson asking the question why haven't we seen joe biden where is he while also simultaneously acknowledging charlie kirk's uh letter this is from charlie kirk i got a weird i'm reading this cold i got a weird lead on a story people ought to look into i got a call from a source close to las vegas metro police the official story was that Biden's trip was cut short last week due to COVID. However, according to this source, U.S. Secret Service informed Las Vegas Metro that there was an emergency situation involving Joe Biden and to close necessary streets so that POTUS could be transported immediately to University Medical, which began to which they began to do in earnest. Then mysteriously, there was a stand down order and the Secret Service informed local Vegas PD that they were going to medevac POTUS to Johns Hopkins which they presume meant fly him back east as soon as possible. Apparently, the rumor mill in the police department was that Joe Biden was dying or already dead, possibly. I didn't think too much about this lead. It seemed too wild to be true. But given that Joe Biden has been out of public sight for days and dropped out of the race via an ex post and his brother James indicated health was a factor, I'm beginning to grow more curious if COVID or something else has been more serious than reported. If anyone with Las Vegas Metro has information, please email freedom at charliekirk.com. I want to hear if there's more to the official story than what they're telling us. Well, I'm sure Las Vegas Metro would be just as just as open as forthcoming as they were during the uh, 
during, during the, the October shooting. Yeah, the, the worst mass shooting in American which, history, which is never spoken of again. They tried to drive me out of a camera position while I was doing a story on it. Yeah, um, clearly there's something no, known for being open and forthcoming. Yeah, um, like the city itself. Clearly something is going on here. Obviously, I don't know what it is. I know its hallmark, which is secrecy. Secrecy is the hallmark of lying. So if you want to know is someone lying, well, I don't know. Is he being is he hiding something? Well, then he's lying. Right. So they're lying. It's actually quite concerning. All jokes aside, all corruption that we know he has done and participated in aside, he has a major medical problem and they're hiding it. They're trying to say yeah, COVID. They are saying some other stuff, you know, before that. Yeah, we can kind of see where the story script is going. And it makes you look at everybody around Joe Biden and his camp, and it makes you realize just how long they have been using this man as a shell. It don't make no sense. And obviously, we know that he's been replaced um, by Kamala Harris. Also, endorsing Kamala Harris, we haven't seen him officially say it out of his mouth and then like that. And then she gets Joe Biden to be on the call while she's on the campaign trail. Uh, and it says right here, Kamala Harris appears excited for presidential campaign on um, for her presidential campaign that she had to remind Joe Biden that she didn't forget about him. Y'all, y'all tell me if this sounds normal. It is so good to hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the on the call and we've been talking every day. Um, you probably you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like fans. And we do everybody here does. It's neutral. <laughs> I knew you were still there. You're not going anywhere, Joe. Oh, I'm watching you, kid. I'm watching you, kid. I love you. I love you, Joe. Oh. Now, the first comment under this video says, she's somehow worse than him. <laughs> ah, man, with the other one, she can't hide the fact that she knows he's gone already. That's what it felt like. She was kind of talking to him like she d she hasn't been the vice president for the last three and a half years. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we love Joe. Oh, you know, Joe's still with us. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what, huh? Somebody said she put a lot of work into this moment and they followed it by a picture with a hot dog in front of her face. That's all I'm going to say. You can tell she's already on a power trip. President Harris is so folk. President Harris. Wow. Let me forget i said that kamala harris is so focused on her own campaign that she almost forgot about good old joe uh, i guess you know the question of the day is if you black do you know whether or not you're voting for kamala harris <laughs> let me read a few more biden was ready to, ready to forget about her it's good to hear your vo voice is what she said as if she hasn't spoken with him in a while for a few sentences later she says we speak every day that is something that i observed that's why i'm sitting back like you talking to him like y'all just ain't cool um on the recording is what she was going to say quote joe i know you're still with us i can feel your presence in the air you'll always be in our hearts and quote mm, yeah that definitely sounds like something is going on that we don't know so much more we're going to get done and so I want to say hello to Kamala. If she can hear me, I know she's going to be speaking shortly. And I want to say to the team, embrace her. She's the best. I want to call today to thank everybody, everybody in this effort. I know yesterday's news was surprising and uh, it was hard for you to hear, but it was the right thing to do. It's, uh, it, I, I know it's hard because you poured your heart and soul into me to help us win this thing, help me get this nomination, help me win the nomination, and then go on to win the, win the, the presidency. But, you know, you're an amazing team, but we've got a great, great, I think we made the right decision. I know how hard you've worked, how many sacrifices you've made, and so many of you, so many of you uprooted your lives for me and the kind of commitment few people make for anything these days, but you made it. And I've been honored and humbled. I mean, this is from the bottom of my heart. Now that was Joe Biden, obviously, before Kamala took the stage. Something don't sound a little off to you at all. Like nothing seems weird about this. I'll even read the quote above this video. So you're telling me that Biden can call into Kamala's campaign headquarters 
and wish her well, but can address the American people. Is anybody actually buying this BS? Where is Joe Biden?